chapter 1, I want to read four verses where we left off. We left off right here last week. And, boy, hearts plowed become soft. I can feel your spirit. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. We're witnessing something that will have <clears throat> supernatural understanding to go with as we go forward. Acts chapter 132, chapter 2, verse 32, excuse me. This is really perfect because I can in five minutes, maybe six minutes, bring you and myself in a position that if we will avail ourselves for the next seven days, by next Sunday, we will have all grown in experiential salvation. So it's wonderful. Men are going to get together 8 o'clock on Saturday. We're doing our inheritance meeting men I want to have all of you here uh, committed to the Lord. He said a year focused training men in prayer. And we do that. We're publishing a book called Teach Us to Pray. It's, and we're going to have all of the men. So just come. If you've never registered, go on, on our website. Register for inheritance so you get our communications. But no matter how you get here, just get here. You don't have to register. Just be here. Grab a friend. Grab a young man and come, 8 o'clock, and we'll be done by 10 o'clock in the morning. Praise the Lord. So, uh, this Jesus, Peter said, verse 32, we're starting a series called the Gospel of Christ. And what is the gospel that was preached when Christ sent the Holy Spirit and the church was born? And we're going to take some time. It's amazing stuff. And today we'll get you a simple picture of practice. But Acts chapter 2, verse 32. This Jesus God raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God. We heard that. And having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear, which we just now saw and heard. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. The church being born, the first message being declared was the preaching of Jesus Christ glorified, raised, exalted, and made Lord and Christ. The, son, the God, the Son, who had emptied himself of all he ever carried from eternity, became the Son of Man. Having been a sacrifice for our sin, he is raised because we've been justified. And now he is the Son of God, made Lord and Christ. Something has never been before, but it was in eternity. But now it is in time and space. A man has been raised from the dead and called to be Lord, Messiah, anointed one. And now that he holds this place, not on earth, his authority touches the earth, but he's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, right next to God. He is our mediator. He is our high priest. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our deliverer. He is the shepherd of the sheep. He has now assumed the title, the honor, the glory that the Father has bestowed upon him because as a man, he submitted himself to the Father throughout his life, then went to the cross, to take upon himself our sin, and there he was judged for our sin, and there he was condemned for our sin, and there the curse of the cross and the, of our sin fell upon him until the judgment was judged and execute, and the condemnation was removed and the curse was exhausted and sin was taken away. This event now it released in his being made alive, when he's raised from the dead, there we are now in a new place, a new opportunity. 
And he brings himself, like Wes just shared, to the 40 days and, and explanation. But now he's ascended. He's seated. He's exalted. And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit's coming. Salvation's coming. And the hearts of men are being made alive. Because we're going to find something. Just the name of Jesus can save you. And just the fact that Father raised him from the dead brings faith with that truth. And that faith that Jesus carries in his resurrection and hearing of his resurrection will cause a heart to believe. And that he now holds all incredible places. One of the things, well, I won't even go there because I just want to get to where he, what happens. It says, when they heard this, it wasn't a long message, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. Repent is to think differently, to think a thought you haven't thought before, to consider a thought you, had, you once held but now you lost. It's, it's to see with the eyes, to hear with the ear, to understand with the heart. And when that happens, the believer comes alive. The, the faith inside. The, the, uh, yeah. And then he says, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus. We just watched that. It's conversion. It's turning to Jesus Christ. It isn't always in water. It's every day. When I hear or see and understand that I'm encountering the Lord in my time of prayer, I turn to behold him, and there he heals me. He changes the course that I'm in. He renews my faith. He restores my soul. And the remission of sins is made alive again. Sometimes we carry too many things with us because we don't take time to exchange our day for his day. We don't get time to let go of what we've done wrong and receive what he did right. We just try to be better the next day, which is a really bad choice. Because the harder we try to be right, the wronger we become. But if we will surrender to the one and his resurrection, knowing that because he was raised from the dead, we have all been forgiven. All we have to do is receive forgiveness. We have to take the moment to value and not try to do what Jesus has done, but to receive who Jesus is. And so... The remission of sins. I repent. I think a new thought. My heart becomes alive. I see with my eyes. I understand my heart. I convert. I return. I return to Jesus. I now have an encounter. First thing I always will experience is I'm free. That's what remission means. Freedom. I'm free. And I don't know about you. Don't have, thank God it isn't only one time at the waters. It's every day. It's every day. And that's what I want to set us up for because we've got to close this service, get our prayer for the nations and keep it going out. Because he says, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Sins removed, Holy Spirit comes. Sins removed, Holy Spirit comes. So I thought you said sin was removed forever. Of course it was. But we will draw, be drawn away by our own lust. And when our lusts conceive, we'll act out on some thought level or some action or some stupid idea that didn't go well. You, you know, and we will find ourselves, well, that kind of left me feel soiled. It, feels, it left me feel feeling distant. I feel dull. I don't feel the freshness that I, I felt. That's where the remission of sin is taken from us when we confess or when we turn to the, Jesus, to the Jesus who's being revealed and the remission is removed, then the Spirit comes. He doesn't leave us empty. He fills us. He fills us. And He fills us. And that's why prayer gets so fun at the end of any encounter is you come alive. I come alive. So for the promise is to your children, and to all who are far off, verse 39, and as many as the Lord will call. So repentance to returning, to remittance of sin, to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or to being refreshed. This is, we will see this over and over again, but we're not going to take the time to take you through them all. What I want to do is, how do you experience this? 
How can I experience this? What we do is we take time, thank God for the living word, but we don't read it to learn it. We read it to experience it. We can take these verses that we've looked to and we can behold and set ourselves in that setting and go, what was that like? To be made aware that this Jesus, this Jesus God raised from the dead and sat him at his right hand and gave him the Holy Spirit and he's poured it out. This Jesus still carries this Holy Spirit. I want a whole, I want to encounter you, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. This Jesus, God has raised up and made Lord and Christ. Lord. Lord. What does Lord mean? Supreme. All authority. It's the one of the highest level of authority. And Christ, what is that? It's not his last name. It's Messiah in the Hebrew, Christ in the Greek or Latin, and it's anointed one. The anointed one. And I want to see, I want to behold. See, the heart, which is what believes, has the capacity to imagine and to understand and to believe. And it, when it comes alive, it, in a moment, transformation takes place and connection starts and infilling fall, flows. And Jesus said, he said, if you're thirsty, come to me. And drink. And he who believes in me, out of his innermost being, out of his belly, will flow a river of living water. Drink, let the river flow. Encounter him. How can I do that? Take time throughout this week to sit down, quiet yourself, separate yourself, or take a walk, however you best can quiet yourself, and turn your attention with a simple prayer. Father, I want to behold your son. I want to see him, where he is today, who he is as the resurrected Christ, as the Messiah, as the Lord, as what I read here in the scripture. If you're curious, well, what? go back to the scripture and say, Lord, I want to see this. Just as Those of you who would like to watch the baptism, it's going to be on YouTube this afternoon. So you can watch your baptism. We can see the experience. Well, do you don't think if we have YouTube in America, God doesn't have YouTube in heaven? You want to see. So, Father, show me what this day was. Show me, Holy Spirit. You were present. You made it happen. They said they could see and hear you. So I want to see and hear you. See, don't let, the, don't let the scripture be intellectual and don't let it be a command. Let it be an invitation to behold. And don't stop looking because I want to tell you who you'll find. You're going to see Jesus for yourself as he is interacting in your current, in my current world. And the beholding to see with imagination, to when you see, then experience. Experience repentance. Experience, Lord, I want to think what I haven't been thinking. I want to, I want to see what I haven't been able to see. God, I want to hear what I can't hear. I want to see Jesus. When you see then turn to what you're seeing. Give him some time. Explain what you're seeing with your mouth. You're all by yourself. God's listening. Hearts need to believe. Mouths need to speak. Just take the time. You'll start to feel something. You'll start to feel the struggle of the day, the debris of yesterday, the troubles, the panic, start to break free because that's all that comes is just this remission, this blotting out. In fact, literally the Greek means for remission, it means to blot out, like to, to put in, go to the source of the origin and remove its very source. You start feeling that. And when you start feeling that, then breathe in and receive Holy Spirit because he's the one now refreshing. He's the one now coming in and making your day new. And do it early. Do it early. 
the earlier of your part of your day that you can give to the Lord to behold him, the rest of the day just gets that much better. If you wait to the end of the day, you've almost wasted the day and prayer only, and all you're going to do is have good night's sleep. But if you start in the early part of the day, you're going to have a great day. You're going to have a great day. So I'm going to let us go. Because, yes, I have a note. Please stop preaching. <laughs> Cammy, someone said if we take an offering, there would be match the amount dollar for dollar. All right. Go empty those buckets. We're going to take another offering. Who would like to double it for double? Yeah, yeah. because how else will we know? We don't want to, they said, if we take an offering, right? Like we take, or this offering? A new offering, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, we're taking another one. Double. How many would like to be a part of that? That's how we'll close and we're going to do it. So it, someone said, if we take an offering, there, he would match that amount dollar for dollar. All right. All right, so let's pray over this. This will be the way we release. Wow! Jesus is in the house, capturing our imagination and our attention. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in your son. We thank you for the salvation that is in your son. This Jesus, this Jesus, you raised, now exalted, and sat at your right hand and gave you the promise of Holy Spirit. He poured him out, we see in here. This Jesus made both Lord and Christ. This Jesus, who plowed through our heart today, through the tenderness of lives being responding to you. This Jesus, who we have been now get called to repent, to think and consider and open our understanding new. This Jesus, who when we see and hear and understand, we turn to him and their sins are remitted. Freedom is coming. And the baptism of the Spirit, fresh and new, and we are alive. This Jesus, who moved on a heart and is moving on all our hearts, is going to double this offering just through the faith of one. Now multiplying with others, joining their faith. So Lord, we declare that all debts are being broken, even the, not just in the house, but all of the households in the house, all of the families, businesses. There's a break here, anointing coming. This Jesus, this Jesus, Move by your spirit and move us then forward into this week and to all that you have for end. And all of these encounters we're going to have for this whole week. Bless the men as we gather on Saturday and then regather together on Sunday. Be with us on the baptism on Wednesday and all day of prayer in the sanctuary. We're in the book of Acts. Thank you, Jesus. We're in the book of Acts. We're in the book of Acts. Thank you, Jesus. Receive us, Lord. Amen. Go ahead. Come. Serve. Worship in the offering. And then we'll release everybody with a blessing. He gave it all to give me all and be one, one with me. It's worth it all to risk it all and worship at his feet. He gave it all.
it all. To give me all and be one, one with me. I was just told too, if you're online and you want to give, just you know how to give on our line. Go to the memo and just write second offering. And it, when it gets through through the Tidely app, we'll know it was this second offering and it'll be doubled also. Stand up, everyone, please. Let's let the Lord bless us. We got a lot of fun to, things to do. We're going to go into a whole new world. There's going to be a lot of remitting of sins throughout the week. A lot of baptism of Holy Spirit. A lot of fresh touches. So, Lord, I want to release the blessing. I want to release the blessing that you are going to release in each of us as we encounter you this week. That you have encountered us. You walked into our service and showed us new and yet profound, simple, powerful truths. Hearts made new. In the name of Jesus, I bless Jubilee with the spirit of repentance to come to the knowledge of the truth, to come to their own and all of our senses, and to escape the snare of him who took us captive. I grant us the gift of repentance. I call forth faith to come alive in the encounters of truth, of seeing Jesus Christ. I bless each one of us with baptism of Holy Spirit baptisms and fresh wind and fresh tongues and fresh vision and fresh prophetic sound. I declare now that this week will be like no other week we've walked with Jesus. It'll be a brand new week, a brand new level of encountering an elevated Christ, exalted at the right hand. I bless us finally with visions of where Jesus sits, who Jesus is, what he has been given, how he administers, how he blesses, how he frees and releases. And this prayerful Jesus of intercession will break through every barrier, every limitation, every restriction, and bring us all into his glorious freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.